Okay, class, welcome back to our online lessons. We want to spend a little bit more time today focusing on the mid-segment of a triangle. And again, the mid-segment of a triangle is created by two midpoints of two sides of the triangle. So in this picture here, we have R is the midpoint of WX, so that means that they have to be congruent. Uh, S is the midpoint of XY, so those must be congruent. And then T, the midpoint of WY, meaning these have to be congruent. So because of that, if we have this, we know there are a couple of uh, special properties that we need. We could immediately say that, for example, RS is parallel <coughs> to the side that it doesn't touch. RS does not touch WY. Those sides must be parallel. In this case, RS, just this segment, is a mid-segment. It is made up of two midpoints. That's why we call this right here one of our mid-segments. In the same way, TS is also a mid-segment and RT is also a mid-segment, and they're each parallel to their corresponding sides. Now the other thing that we knew because, uh, for example, because RS is a mid-segment, we know that the length of RS must be equal to one-half the length of the side it is parallel to. So one-half times the length of WY. Now if you prefer, if it's easier to write it the other way around, you can say that two times the length of RS must be equal to the length of WI. And we've seen this like a little bit already in some of our problems, but now we want to be able to <clears throat> go a little bit further along with these and do a little bit more complicated algebraic problems. So let's take a look at just a couple of examples. First of all, again, pretty simple to work with. Right here again, we're given that R, S, and T are midpoints of their corresponding sides. And we want to answer these questions. So let's start right away. If R we need to know what RS is parallel to. Again, RS must be parallel to the side that it does not intersect. It intersects WX, it intersects XY, so segment RS must be parallel to segment WY. Same idea if we look at ST here, must be parallel to side WX as a result because that is the side it does not intersect. Okay, now a little bit more of the problems to look at, a little more complicated. Right here, TY is supposed to be four units long. And because of that, we want to see what RS is. Well, in this regard, if this segment right here, because T is a midpoint, that means that these two segments must be congruent to each other. That means this must also be four units long as well. And remember, we just said that this segment, RS, must be half the length of this segment, WY. So because of that, half of 4 plus 4 is just, again, 4 units. Again, 4 plus 4 is 8, that's the length of WY. Cut it in half to get the length of RS, 4 units. And then the last one you want to look at is if RT, which is this segment right here, if RT is 7 units long, we want to know what XY is. Well, again, this mid-segment of the triangle is 7 units. It is half the length of the segment it is parallel to. So we need to know what 2 times of this length is. So just 7 times 2, which is 14 units long. So it was a pretty basic. You saw a few of these uh, in your classwork um, on Monday. So we just want to continue on from here with making them a little bit more difficult. If we go one step at a time, <coughs> excuse me, we will start again with what we know. TS, that is this segment right here. If TS equals this value, x plus 4, and we also know that WX equals this big segment over here, then we need to know what is the actual length of TS. So we need to try to set up our problem here. Well, let's start with what we know. We know TS is x plus 4. We also know that WX is 3x minus 10. But how are these two segments related? Well, don't forget this segment TS is half the length of this. Another way to say it is that 2 times the length of TS is equal to the length of WX. So if you want to say TS, which is X plus 2, equals what's left, 3X minus 10, because that is the length of WX. So that's the equation you would want to set up. Again, because 2 times the length of TS, which is that given right here, equals the length of WX. So as you go, and you want to try to solve this now. So distribute that 2, get 2x plus 8, 
equals 3x minus 10. And when you go and you want to solve now for x. So you would subtract 2x from both sides and you would have 8 equals x minus 10. And when you simplify your answer, you get x equals 18. But we're not done yet. That just tells us what x is. We need to now find out what the actual length of what's it want, segment TS. So we just plug back in for TS. We know that x equals 18, so we plug it in, and we get that our answer is 22. That is the length of what TS is. Let's look at another problem. In number 2, <clears throat> we're going to start in the same idea. RS, which is this segment right here, we're in blue now, and we know what that length is. We also know what the length of a WT is. Now, we got to be careful here. We're now not dealing with one segment and that this RS being half the length of the entire segment WY. Don't forget, T is a midpoint. That means that these two segments are congruent to each other. Their lengths are equal. Because of that, if RS must be the exact or must be half the length of this entire thing, WY, and WY is already cut in two, that means that all three of these individual segments, RS, WT, and TY, must be congruent to each other. So as a result, we can just say, because we want to say RS and WT are, are congruent to each other, we can just set their measurements equal, just like that. So we have X plus 12 equals 2X minus 8. And then all you want to do is solve again, and you should get that um, 20 is your answer. 20 equals X. Again, not done yet. That just tells us what X is. To find RS, we want to plug back in. So if we plug in 20 for X, 20 plus 12 is our length, which is 32. So again, when we're doing these problems, you want to look and see, okay, are we dealing with this mid-segment of the triangle and the entire length opposite? If so, you want to multiply that length by 2 because we need 2 of that length to equal the whole one. If it's just this small length and one part of this of the triangle it's parallel to, then you're going to want to look and see if you set them equal to each other. So take this time. You have two more problems here. I'd like you to try them on your own. And then when you, so just hit the pause button for now. And when you have completed these problems, hit play again and see how your answers went. All right, let's take a look at how you did. For number three, we want to look at RT and XY. So we're looking at the small segment, uh, of the mid-segment RT, and the entire segment XY. So you want to say that because this is dealing with 2 times the length of RT has to equal the whole length XY, you want to say that 2 times 5X minus 2 equals 12X minus 18. As you're doing your simplifying, you need to distribute. You'll get 10x minus 4 over here to equal the same thing, equaling 12x minus 12, or 12x minus 18, I'm sorry. Then from there, you want to simplify more. You get 2x when you uh, subtract 10x from both sides. You need to add 18 to both sides, so you would get 18 minus 4, which is 14, which leaves you with the answer of 7 equals x. And again, we're not done. You need to plug it back in. 5 times 7 is 35, minus 2 means that your length of RT must be 33 units. And then, so let's look at now number 4. In number 4, all we're looking at is RT again, but this time we're looking at the smaller segment, XS, which we know if those two are congruent, that's congruent to each small segment as well. So we're just going to set those equal to each other, 5X minus 2 equals... 12x minus 18. To solve it, 7x should equal 14. Oh, it will equal, actually, I'm sorry, it will equal 16. And you're going to get a fraction of an answer here, like 16 over 7 is going to equal x. So that's what you would want to plug back in to find your answer, and you do get a pretty complicated fraction, which don't worry about for the time being. It's more important about how you set it up. You would do 5 times 16 over 7, and then subtract 2, and that's how you would get your answer. 
Alright, one other thing just we wanted to quickly discuss, uh, not as important, but very, uh, very interesting. You've been seeing in the mornings we've been uh, having pictures of the fractals on the board, which are just geometric shapes that repeat over and over again. Well, there is a very special type of fractal that is seen a lot. It's called the Sierpinski's fractal. And in this fractal, if you take, all you do is you take the mid-segment of a triangle, the mid-segments of a triangle and create another triangle, like so that is the beginning of your fractal. What do you do from here on out is to complete, keep going with that idea. In each of those little triangles, make another mid-segment all the way around and connect them to make more triangles. In each little triangle again that you've now created, you can just make more and more of these mid-segments and make completely new triangles as a result. If you were to repeat this process over and over and over again, which you can because there's always going to be a space remaining, you're just going to get a, a repeating pattern over and over. And the picture you get will look something like this. This is just a really popular fractal and one of the easiest ones you can create. And the way you make it is just by using the mid-segments of a triangle. And just something a little bit cool and interesting uh, to compare to what else we've been doing in class and what else we've been seeing. So I just wanted to give you guys the opportunity to see that idea with fractals and, com and comparing them with the mid-segments that we've done. Well, that's it for tonight. Tomorrow in class you will be doing more work with the mid-segments and those problems. And from here we'll start learning some more properties of triangles. So any questions, make sure you uh, address them when you take your quiz here in a couple of minutes. Other than that, uh, hopefully this will all be good and we'll see you tomorrow.